a lot of money I can make off this bad boy. Hey folks, welcome to your favorite saw milling channel. It's Robert Milton, Hobby Hardwood, Alabama. And today, I wasn't really sure what kind of video I was going to make until I stumbled upon this beauty. It is a nasty, ugly log. It has a lot of issues with it. There is going to be some gorgeous wood in it. It's not a butt log. Typically, I will like to saw butt logs. This is a second cut. It's the second log off the tree. How do I know that? Because there's a limb right here. Typically, limbs don't grow that close to the ground. It's got some voids in it that are going to be a real problem. It's a pretty big log, too. It's got some cracks there. It's got some major stress crack right there. It's been out in the sun too long. It's got some sapwood cracks. I'm not a big fan of sapwood, so I'll take those off. Now, I normally don't like sawing logs with these big old knots on them. And yeah, I probably should cut this off with a chainsaw to smooth it out, but I'm too lazy. I'm not going to do that. So loading it's going to be a problem. And it's a decent sized log, too. Let me see if I can find a tape measure. Hang on. My handy dandy scale stick. If you ever wondered what one of these are, I'll do a video on them one of these days. You can't run a sawmill business without a scale stick. Even there, it's almost two foot, 23 inches, so it's a nice log. A lot of money I can make off this bad boy. Now, I did have to pay for this, but I didn't pay super high dollar. If you think of a log, being rectangular like a cant. Each of the four sides of a cant or four faces of the cant may or may not have defects in them. So if a cant has defects in only one face, that's called 3CF because there's three clear faces. If it's got defects on two faces, like this one right here, then that's called a 2CF. Now the reason that's important, because I know everybody out there has read and memorized the NHLA rules for common and face grade lumber. It's the National Hardwood Lumber Association. I'll do a video on that one of these days if y'all want me to. It's kind of like a scale stick. If you want to be a professional sawmiller, you can't work without one of these and you can't work without memorizing the NHLA handbook for grade rules of hardwood logs, if you're a hardwood log sawyer. Now, if you're a pine sawyer or a softwood sawyer, there's different grade and different rules for those. But if you're doing hardwood, I guess even if you're a hobbyist, if you really want to know what you're doing and you want to see what you're doing, you need to know the NHLA grade book inside and out. I get really frustrated sometimes. <laughs> People call me up and they say, hey, I've been sawing some, some logs and I got some lumber. I go, what, what kind of lumber is it? And they go, it's good. It's good. You got good wood. Okay. That's not good enough. Um, what grade is it? Well, I don't know. It's off the mill. Well, it doesn't tell me anything. If you want me to buy your wood or if you want me to sell you wood or if you're going to buy and sell to any other professional lumber organization, lumber company, whatever, the first thing they're going to ask you, probably before they ask your name, is what grade lumber are you selling? Your answer can't be, well, it's good. <laughs> I feel like going to, the, going to the grocery store and buying a dozen eggs and you go up there and they're labeled good and bad. Hey, I won't send them eggs. What kind are they? Well, I don't know. They're, they're good, mostly. <laughs> but people do that all the time with logs and lumber. So every single board that comes off a commercial hardwood sawmill gets graded against the NHLA grading standards, period. 
So if you're buying commercial wood, or if you're selling commercially, or if you want to sell commercially, you need to know those standards. Anyway, enough about that lecture and stuff. That'll be another topic for a video is, if you want it to be, if you let me know if you want me to cover that. It's a little dry, but it's pretty important. Actually, it's really important. <laughs> Solid good wood, please don't say that. <laughs> just don't just don't it just doesn't sound right i got good wood just don't just don't just don't <laughs> anyway this log is going to be a pain in the ass but i figured y'all want to watch it let's see how much number one common how much face grade wood according to the nhla handbook i can make out of this especially realizing that in the nhla handbook walnut has its own grading rules because it's such a good wood. <laughs> Doesn't that sound stupid? Yeah, this is gonna be an ugly one. We're gonna do what's called the scooch. Try, kinda scooch it over, about like that. Then I'm going to raise the log turner and actually pull it in. I like that. Hey, that worked. So here we have some issues. We got a bark inclusion right there. Got a double barrel fork. Got a lot of stress crack almost all the way out to the side. Got something there. That probably used to be a nail on the butt bog. First thing, let's cut that big mess off. Wasn't that much easier than using a chainsaw. Because again, I don't really care what happens there. I was just getting rid of. I think this is the dominant stress crack. I know I'm gonna have an inclusion there. I got this joy right here. So I would really have that better more to diagonal where I could snip it off, but it's kind of in a bad spot. Got what used to be a nail hit right here. That's the color of iron, but I don't think it's in this log. I may be wrong. And to make matters worse, instead of being a straight log, if you look, you'll notice that this stress cracks on the side are running diagonal. So this log's got twist in it. You can't win them all, but I sure am going to try to win this one. I can't get it all leveled out because there really is no real best place. This is, I'm looking at the bottom and the top, and I think this is where I'm going to start. I really need to get under some of that sap wood on one side. I got that. Normal face grade hardwood, you need a six inch face. With uh, walnut, you only need a four. Let's take these guys off, let's take a look at them. So now I've got an interesting problem. Right about here where my head's going down, I've got a big split. So I'm going to use my toe boards. I'm going to excise that. Because this is a good size. Remember, for NHLA rules on walnut, I only need a four-inch face, sapwood or heartwood. I mean, I don't like sapwood, so I'm gonna go deeper. I want heartwood. This should be one full-face heartwood. Once this comes off the edger, I will have exceeded the requirements so this is my final face. I've got a defect here that's obvious. I'll center that little ugly spot. Here's my first cut, and then I'll cut under that, and I should clear all of that damage. Let's find out. So it's kind of hard to explain this sometimes. When I'm looking at this defect right here, I don't believe there's a nail in there, or I didn't believe there's a nail, and I think there was one that used to be. 
this is too much to be covered by one board. So I'm going to extract it in two. I'm going to make sure there's a clean face here, there's a clean face here. NHLA rules requires four inches. I'll have wider than four there, wider than four there. I'll have right at four there. So I'll have four boards out of this as long as I don't hit that nail that's not in there. And I didn't hit that nail <clears throat> that's not in there. So I'm good. Let's move on. I shouldn't say I'm good. I should say I'm happy. So let's keep on. Let's pull those guys back. See if I can separate this guy. It looks nice. That's pretty. I guess the other thing to realize is how little sawdust I'm having to scrape. If you're having to scrape sawdust, you're hurting yourself. There's no reason to scrape sawdust. There's too many ways to avoid it. I've covered it in other videos. I see a stress crack and a stress crack. But this isn't too bad. The dominant stress this direction and that direction. There's almost no stress there. I'm going to saw down until I get down to the juvenile core. And I'm going to rotate over. Complicated log. I'll take one more from that. See what we got. Big wide boards here. This stress crack is nearly 90 degrees to the to the predominant surface of this side. So is this one and this one. So what this means then is this whole part of the cant right here is trying to go that way, and that one's trying to go that way. That's why those are in there. Think of a like playing cards in a deck. So I don't want my boards to bow. I would rather them crook in hardwood. In softwood, you want bow. In hardwood, you don't want bow. You want crook. So I am perfectly set up right now. So I can take one, two, probably three boards to get down into this plane. And that will take care of the stress in this direction. And then that will set me up for some six inch boards to finish out in the other direction. I'm going to go down. I'm going to take a couple more on this side. out really good at the end notice how I got all the stress in the face direction or I should say all the stress in the slip direction or the shear plane direction yes I do have a few cracks there that's not a big deal because uh, that's why you always put a little end trim on your logs so I'll trim that off still have a full eight foot log everything's laying flat this is gonna be a good one. I really didn't get much low grade out of this guy. Had a few knots here and there, but it wasn't too bad. And we're all about full disclosure here at the old Hobby Hardwood. So I did end up with two pithy boards, P-I-T-H-Y. And these don't look too bad on this side. They look horrible on the inside. So this is easy. I just throw these out. These turned out really nice surprisingly well for such a garbage log but hey sometimes you just get lucky 
so let me know what y'all think we will see you next time on sawing with hobby hardwood robert milton except this time maybe next time i'll just saw up some wood and quit talking it hurts my voice anyway we'll see y'all later thanks for visiting our sawmill click on the links above to see more of our videos